Hey, welcome to this episode of Gas Therapy. I'm Michael. I share my knowledge of musical gear solutions, which are cheaper and better, in my opinion. Make sure to subscribe to my channel so you wouldn't miss my future updates. And today, we're going to replicate the Chase Bliss Generation Loss Mark II pedal. Oh my god, it's mouthful. Let's go. So before we dive into detailed functions, I need to point out the biggest issue of this pedal. If you want to play guitar, bass, or drum, or anything rhythmically intense through this pedal lively, forget about it. This pedal has non-acceptable audio latency issue, in my opinion. It will fail you just like you're using a super weak computer as an effect box. Or should I say, this pedal is made of a super weak CPU chip, which is same as a super weak computer which gives you unavoidable audio latency. And you can never find out the audio latency if people only demonstrating it through a loose played ambient track. But I still love the idea and the sound of this pedal. Wait, I don't think I like the sound of this pedal because this pedal doesn't make any sound on its own. It's just making your existing sound dirty in a few ways. All of those pedal demo videos which makes you think this pedal is amazing is all because of the amazing instrument playing initially. And then they send the sound into this pedal, make it low fire. Also, blend with some stickers or toys visually. That's what I enjoy. So what I really like is actually the good instrument playing in lo-fi combined with toys. But since you are here for this specific pedal, I guess I have to show you how to replicate everything for free. And we are using a free plugin called Cho Tape Model, which is available for PC, Mac, Linux, and iOS. And yeah, all the versions are free. Now let me show you the details on how to generation loss mark II. By the way, the sound source instrument plugin I'm using is AA Sample Player, developed by me. And it's free, link in the description. Firstly, let's see the most important two knobs for lo-fi instrument effect. Wow, and the flutter. And we have them on board with this free plugin. You can control the amount, frequency, frequency variation, and the pitch drift amount of wall, and also the flutter frequency and the amount. This low frequency wobble in pitch is the must have for a lo fi instrument sound. The second important effect of this pedal for mimicking tape effect is saturation. And for a tape saturation, it actually combines off compression and uh, saturation. And you also got this under control in this plugin. And the third effect we are going to replicate is the failure. And this so-called failure is actually mimicking the defects of a low-quality tape machine would add to the sound. And this free plugin provides a lot of defect options. You have degrade, which can cut your audio randomly and replace it with tape heads. Depth is controlling the mix of tape noise and the original audio. Amount, it is changing two things. First one is on off switch of the tape heads. The second one is frequency of a low pass filter. Variance is controlling how often the tape heads would come in. And you can also change the amplitude envelope of the tape noise.
And if you combine Degrade and the Wow and the Flutter, this plugin would sound just like Generation Lost Mark II. And you also have True, which is replacing your original audio with bit crushed ones and random silence occasionally, which sounds like your audio is chewed up by the tape machine. Again, just like Generation Lost Mark II. And with Generation Lost Mark II, you also have this knob called Model. It's just some pre-designed EQ and filter presets, which may make different tape models. And we got those options in this plugin too. There's a tab called Loss in this plugin. Yes, it's also in the name of this pedal, which has EQ and low-pass filter. The name of each dial is not that understandable, so let me translate it for you. The gap is a subtle frequency resonance control. Thickness and spacing are the filter amount of two low-pass filter which has different frequency range. They also control the frequency of each filter, but they won't work if the speed dial is at its full level. And this speed dial is actually controlling the frequency of a wider ranged low-pass filter. But it controls nothing if the thickness and spacing are at zero. Those functions are presented weird and uh, tricky, which I think is not necessary, but uh, it is what it is, and it is free. And if you want a more obvious low-pass filter, you can just crank up the thickness and the spacing and then sweep with your speed dial. If you are not satisfied with low-pass filter and you want to filter out some low frequency, then you got a low-cut filter option. And you can also control and mirror the stereo width and pan with this azimuth control. I don't know how to pronounce it. And I noticed that uh, Generation Loss Mark II has a spread function, which is actually auto pan effect. And we can use the auto pan effect from the free Melda production effect bundle. This bundle also have a pretty good auto tune effect, which I covered it in my Roland E4 video. If you missed it, you can check it out. Link in description. And this pedal also has a tape stop effect. You can use a free plugin called Cassette Transport. It has customizable speed and also automatable knobs. I already covered it in my OP1 replacement video. If you missed it, you can check it out. Link in the description. <laughs> There is also a freeze function, which I couldn't find an easy replacement, but I don't think it is useful in my experience, because the repeated trimmed part would sound really boring after like uh, twice or three times looping. So I'll just uh, ignore it. As for the crackle and the pop noise, just grab some uh, free sample. It's just so easy. So now let's see what it would sound after we assemble everything together. So now you can see that we can almost replicate everything for this $400 pedal with computer level audio latency. And to be honest, as a former guitar player, I never liked any guitar pedal except the Wawa one because they always require you to do this.
They're just stupidly designed, all of them, except the Wawa one, in my opinion. I'd rather use my mouse and trackpad to control the knobs, which is way healthier than using those little metal boxes on the ground when you are playing your instruments standing up. They're just so stupidly designed, except the Wawa pedal. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. All the free solutions got their link in the description, you can go check it out. Leave a comment if you have any question. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more future content. And you can also download the GarageBand project files from my Patreon, link in the description. And also, don't forget to grab my AA sample player, which is free for both Mac and PC, 99 cents for iOS. And any tip would help me and this channel a lot. I'm Michael, this is Guy Therapy, reminding you that you can do a lot of stuff with what you already have. Any extra gears would only distract you from improving your music and skills. I was there, and uh, I don't want to go back anymore. See you in the next one. Peace.